Hello and welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We've got a great, awesome conversation with the CEO and co-founder of Harness, a hot startup, Joe Tipasal, who is the co-founder and CEO, but also the co-founder of Unusual Ventures, which is a really awesome venture capital firm doing some great uh, work, investments, but also they have great content over there for entrepreneurs and for people in the community. And of course, he's also the founder of Big Labs, his uh, playground, if you will, building out new applications, also well known for being the founder of AppDynamics, a super successful uh, billion dollar exit as a startup, uh, sold to Cisco, uh, and now doing a lot of things and driving harness, solving big problems. So, so Joe T, uh, mouthful intro there, you've done a lot. Congratulations on your amazing entrepreneurial career and now your next, uh, next, next opportunity is harness among other things. So congratulations, thank you for coming right, on. Yeah, thank, thank you, John. And uh, uh, glad to be here. You guys are solving a big problem in software delivery. Obviously software is changing the world. You're seeing open source projects increasing at an order of magnitude. Enterprises jumping on open source. In general, adoption large scale with cloud. Software is being delivered faster than ever before and with cloud scale and now edge, there's huge challenges around how software is deployed, managed, maintained. You got, we're talking about space too. How do you do break, fix in space? All these things are happening at a massive scale across the world. You are solving a big problem. So take a minute to explain what Harness is doing, why you guys exist, why you're jumping in into this venture. Sure, yeah. You know, what Harness mission is to simplify software delivery and make it uh, top notch for everyone. Like if you look at like, you know, the likes of uh, Google and uh, Facebook and Netflix and Amazon, uh, these companies have mastered the process of software delivery. Like, and your engineers write code and the code is shipped to the end users and they can do it like multiple times a day at their scale and, you know, at the complexity that they have. But most other businesses in the world, they all want to be software companies, but it's extremely, extremely hard for them to get there. And I, I saw this firsthand when I was at AppDynamics uh, as uh, you know, as uh, CEO last year, we had about 12, 1300 employees in the company. And we had about, about 350 or so engineers in the company. And you know, for every 10 or 12 engineers, we had one person whose job was to write automation and scripting and tooling for try to ship software, you know, uh, you know, all kind of scripting uh, kind of stuff, right? We'll write scripts in Chef and Puppet and Ansible and to deploy in AWS and whatnot, right? And we, you know, one day we, we're doing the math. We are like, you know, we have, you know, about uh, overall about 30 uh, people whose job was to do DevOps engineering by writing automation, et cetera, to deploy software. And I would do the math, like, you know, one engineer costs us 200K loaded cost, that's 6 million a year that we are spending 6 million a year just writing deployment scripting, you know, and even with that, we were nowhere close to world-class, like world-class as in like what you would think, you could ship every day, you could ship on demand, you could, you know, you could deploy software, ship software, all of that, right? And that was the, you know, I looked at that as, as, as a problem inside AppDynamics and all the AppDynamics customers I would talk to, like large banks and insurance companies and retailers and telcos and I would hear the same challenge. Like, you know, we hear about DevOps, we go to the, all these DevOps conferences and events, and we see the same 10 companies, you know, presenting how they home grew some kind of a DevOps system for software delivery, et cetera. And, you know, to me, that was like, you know, we just, we cannot survive with this. Like, and as a world, we need to have uh, the right kind of platforms for software delivery and simplify this so that everyone could become as good as in Google, Netflix, Amazon, et cetera. That's 10 of our mission at, 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 at Harness. That can we take every business in the world you know, and in a few weeks or a few months, can we get them as sophisticated and good in terms of their tooling for software delivery as a Google, Facebook, Amazon, those kind of companies would be. And that's that's what we are trying to solve. It's a great ambition. And by the way, it's a bold move and it's needed. I'll tell you, it's interesting you mentioned some of those commentary about, about shipping code at that speed. Facebook, Google, they had that, they had, they were forced to do that. And again, they have all that benefit. The mainstream enterprise doesn't. But if you even go back 20 years ago, 15 years ago, that's when Amazon was born. AC2 and S3 are celebrating their 15th birthday. Software, mm -hmm. yeah, hyperscalers had some good moves there, but the average business went from craft, you know, waterfall, QA department, go back a little bit slower. I won't say slow motion, but you know, manageable. Mm -hmm. Now with the speed of shipping, and the speed of the scale, that's a huge mm -hmm. issue. What kind of pressure do you see that putting on the developer, uh, the, the individual, not just the, the system? Because you got the system of development yeah. and, the de and the developers themselves. I think the developers have, have uh, done quite well to this, I feel. Like, you know, if you look at the software development part as well, itself, 
you know, the agile development has been happening for quite some time. So developers have learned how to ship things fast and like in a, in a week sprint or a two week sprint or in, in kind of faster cycles, they, they have moved off from the waterfall kind of models like many years ago now. So that's the software and development side of things. Then you have the infrastructure side of things, which is the, like, can you provision infrastructure fast? Can you get hardware fast? That's the, you know, the, the cloud has done that well. Where the challenge is the process. The so developers are writing code fast enough these days, and you have the you know the infrastructure itself could be provisioned and maintained and 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 change fast enough. But how do you bring it all together and there is the entire process around it? That's not moving fast enough. So that's where the bottleneck is. So I feel the you know and the, if the process is not good, the developer experience becomes really bad bad because developers are waiting for the process to go and, you know, they write some code and the code is sitting on the shelf and they are waiting for things. Uh, they get mad. Know, <laughs> they get all pissed off and mad. Like, what, yes. what's the holdup? Why, what's the process? Yes. And then security, exactly. shifting left. Yeah. Wait a minute, I got to go back and rewrite code. This yeah, is yeah. huge. I want to just get back and just nail a little quickly, if you don't mind honing in yeah. on the pro value proposition. What mm -hmm. is the harness value proposition? What is the pitch? What are you, what, what are you offering? What are you solving? Can you nail in on that real quick? Sure. So what Harness is solving is simplifying that software delivery pipeline. So a developer writes code and then code goes, uh, goes through a bunch of steps, a bunch of steps, which is, uh, you know, you build the code, then you, you know, test the code, uh, you know, then you do integration tests, then you, you know, uh, go through your security checks, then you go through your compliance checks, then you go through more testing, then you deploy in a staging environment, then you go bunch, do a bunch of things on it. Then you start deploying in production environment, but in production you will deploy on like a small part of production, verify everything is working well. If it's not working well, you'll roll it back. If it's working well, then you deploy to more things. This entire process could take like weeks for people to do. And this is mostly automated, you know, in kind of, uh, uh, you know, script, this kind of random scripts here and there, et cetera, right? So we simplify that entire process. That you could describe your process in the language I just described, like, you know, in a very declarative kind of way, like this is the process I want to achieve and Harness will automatically create your pipelines for this, this kind of process. And most of these pipelines have a lot of heavy use of intelligence and ML to it, to go from one step to another. Like, so many times, like when you say, you know, deploy the code in 1% in, in of my uh, production environment and see if everything is working well. And if everything is working well, go to the next 10%. Uh, but how do you figure out if everything is working well? And that's where the intelligence and ML comes in. Like, you know, where we learn what is the normal behavior of your application? How does the normal part of the code works? Like, you know, are there, what's the performance behavior? What is the functional behavior? What errors it is? And if everything is good, then you go to the next step. So that entire cycle harness automatically, uh, you know, uh, manages and it's automated. You know, if you get governance, you get like, you know, a high degree of automation, you get high degree of, you know, security, you get high degree of like, you know, uh, uh, you know, quality around it. And so it's, it's think of like a C, the, the CI CD as a lot of developers know, know this process as the CI CD on steroids, you know, available to you right away. That, that so you thing. sounds like you're making it easier on the CI CD pipelining process, standing it up, detecting it, prototyping it, if you will, for lack of a better mm -hmm. description, get, get used to the pipeline and then move it out, roll it out and build your own in a way to so help that. Yeah. Is that what it, is that what you're doing? Yes, like, you know, a lot of these uh, complex CI-CD pipelines, what people need, you know, it can take them like three months, six months to, to put it, uh, you know, put it together. With, with Harness, it's like an hour. An hour you could put it together, you know, a very, very sophisticated uh, uh, CI-CD pipeline. And the pipeline is, you know, uh, automated is, 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 you know, it's, it's intelligent around like, you know, what is the normal behavior of your, of your applications. Uh, it's, it's just, so fundamentally different than how people have done CI/CD before. That we simplify the process, automate the process, you know, and make it manageable in very, very sophisticated environments. And it's funny you mentioned the three weeks, it, weeks it could take to do the CI/CD pipeline. Of course, that doesn't factor in the, the what happens when you roll it out. People start complaining, playing with it, breaking it. Then you got to go back and do it again. I mean, that's real. I mean, that's a real problem. I mean, can you just kind of give a taste of the of the of the scar tissue that goes on there? What's some of the what are some of the what's some of the pain points that you solve? Yes, so I think the that is that really becomes the core of the pain point. Like you know, people need like high amount of debuggability, easy to change things. You know, it's 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 we call it like the lack of intelligent automation. You know, and the and and this heavy amount of developer toil that the developers have to do so much work around around making all of this work. Like you know, it has to be simplified. 
So that's that's where our value prop comes in. Like you know, it's uh, it's we, we, we you know uh, you can get like a visual builder and like minutes you can build out the entire process, which is your sophisticated CI/CD pipeline. Or you could also do like a declarative YAML interface and just like you know in, in a few lines just write up whatever process you would want. And we would we 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 ship with all kind of integrations with every cloud environment, every monitoring system, every build system, every kind of a testing process, every kind of security scanning. So you can just drag and drop, and in, in minutes you're 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 you're, you're, you're up and running. Yeah. So it, it just creates so much velocity in this entire process, and also this manageability that people have struggled with. Yeah, morale too. I mean, you can imagine the morale of developers go up significantly when you start seeing that. The developer, you know, productivity has always been a big thing, but this intelligent automation conversation is huge. Some people have it, some people don't. Some people say they have it. What mm -hmm. is, how can you, how can the company figure out uh, if someone's really got the real deal when it comes to intelligent automation? Because again, <laughs> automation is the, re is, is key into DevOps. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think it, I I almost call it like you know, like if you look at the the generational evolution of things, like the 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 first generation uh, was uh, that you know a developer writes code and then it will give you you will give it to some some IT admin who will go and deploy the code, run some commands and do things. Right. Generation two was writing scripts that you will write a lot of scripts. That was automation, but it was kind of dumb automation. And that's how we have, you know, the, the, that's where the industry is. So actually uh, right now, even most of it. Uh, the third generation is when the automation is, you don't write scripts to, you know, uh, to, to automate things. You tell a system what you want to achieve and it generates automation for you, right? And that's what we call intelligent automation where it's all declarative and all the, you don't have to maintain a lot of, you know, scripts, et cetera, because they are, you know, they, you can't keep up with it. You know, you have to change the process all the time, and if you change the process, it doesn't work. It becomes completely, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, it becomes very fragile to 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 manage it. So that's that's really where intelligent automation comes in. You know, I, I look at like you know, if 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 you can have like a like you look at like a Tesla, you know, making cars, the entire assembly line is automated. Uh, but is is it, but it's if you want to change something in the assembly line. Even that process is automated and it's very simple, right? So it's, and that's what gives them so much, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, let's say control and manageability around the manufacturing process. So uh, the software delivery, uh, you know, by uh, assembly line, which is the software, software by CI CD pipeline really should be more sophisticated and more intelligent as well now. Yeah. And that's, that's the next generation. Yeah, Jyoti, you're also pointing out something that we cover a lot on theCUBE and we've been writing about is, how modern software practices are changing, whether it's team makeup or whatever, it's speed is key, but also getting data, everyone who's successful with cloud and cloud scale, and now you got the edge opening up, and like I said, even space is, is going to be uh, programmable. Everything's programmable, and the key is to get the data from the use cases, right? Get something deployed, look at it, get some data, and then double down and make it better. That's a modern approach, not build it and then rebuild it and re tear it down and rebuild it. Which you're kind of yeah. leaning into this idea of, let's get mm -hmm. some delivery going, let's structure it, and then feed it more so that the developers can iterate with, with, with the pipeline. And this, is, this again, can scale. Can you talk yeah. about that? Can you con comment on your reaction to that? Yeah, uh, definitely. That's exactly how we look at it. Like, you know, you, uh, you, you want developers to kind of like say they want to do a, you know, automate a process to deploy in their Kubernetes infrastructure. In a matter of minutes, you should be able to, to get started. But now it's like, you know, we there's so much data that comes into it, like, you know, that you have monitoring systems, you know, systems like AppDynamics and New Relic and Datadog and you have your logging systems, your Splunk and Elastic and, you know, uh, Sumo Logic, you have your, you know, different kind of testing systems, you have your security scanning. So there's so much data in it. They're like, you know, terabytes and terabytes of data from it. So when you start doing your deployments, we could also consume all of the data and see like what was the impact of those deployments or code changes in each of these monitoring, testing, logging kind of systems and you know what how the data changes. And then now it's like based on that, we can learn like you know what should be your ideal process and what will break in your process. And that's that's the the, the how harness platform works. That's the core of that intelligent automation that works. Yeah. We are expanding it now to bring a few more of the DevOps use cases into it also. Like the one is cloud cost management. Because when you when you you know uh, uh, you know when we started shipping this, a lot of people would tell us like you know you you're, do, you're doing a great job uh, helping us managing the quality, which we always were concerned about, like when we're deploying things or you know security, you know functionality, etc. 
But cloud cost is a big challenge as well. You have, you're paying like tens and tens of millions of dollars to the cloud providers. And when developers do things auto, in an automated way, it could increase your cloud cost suddenly and we don't know what to, how to manage that. So that's the, you know, we, we introduced a new module called cloud cost management to, as part of the DevOps software delivery process that every time you're shipping code, can we also figure out like, you know, what would the impact on, the, on, your, on your cloud cost? You know, can we automate the, you know, uh, if there is, there is too much impact, can we automate the, you know, the rollback around it? You know, can you get an, can you, can we stop the delivery process at that, that point? Can we help you troubleshoot and, you know, reduce the cost down? So that's, you know, that's cost becomes another, another, another dimension to it. Uh, right, you know, then we recently just added, uh, you know, uh, the next level that's managing feature flags. You know, a lot of the time software developers are adding feature flags to like this feature would be given to this consumer and like, you know, and this feature would be given to this consumer until you test it out through a A-B test kind of thing. And like, you know, what is the impact of, you know, uh, turning a feature on versus off? You know, we are, we are bringing that into the, the same CI CD pipeline. So it's kind of an integrated approach to this, uh, you know, aut intelligently automated uh, pipeline instead of these uh, small point approaches that just very hard to manage. I mean, the level of data involved, the feature flag, for instance, is a great, is an amazing thing because that allows you to, to do things that used to be extremely difficult to, to provision. Mm -hmm. I mean, just picking the color of an icon, for instance, this kind of blue, I mean, I was just, you hear about this, these kinds of things happening at scale and the data is pretty accurate when it comes in. So I think that's an example of the kind of speed and agility that developers mm -hmm. want. And the question I want to ask you though, on that point, because this opens up the whole next conversation, you guys have a modern approach and so much traction and you've recently raised big rounds of funding. As you go to the marketplace, you're an experienced entrepreneur and, and uh, and CEO, you've seen the waves before. What's the big wave that you're on now? What's the big momentum uh, tailwind for Harness? Is it the fact that you're creating this value for developers or is it the system that you're integrating into with the intelligence to make things smarter and more scalable? What's the, or is it all of the above? Could you just share what that, that story yeah. is? Yeah, I think it, it's it's really, uh, really uh, both of them. Like, you know, when our, our business case, when you go to people, we tell them, like, say, if you have, you know, 200 developers, uh, you know, we can give you the world's best software delivery tooling at the cost of half to one developer, right? So, like, you know, so which is like for for a 200 person organization at like at 200, 300, 300 thousand dollars a year, they will get the best software delivery tooling better than a Google, Facebook, Amazon kind of companies very, very quickly, right? So our, our entire value prop is built on that. Like, you know, your developer experience gets much better. Their productivity gets much better. Developers on an average are spending like 20 to 30% of their time on deployment delivery related toil, like unnecessary stuff that they have to deal with. So it's 20, 30% more efficiency gain for your developers. Their quality of life gets better that they don't need to worry about like weekends and nights to babysit your deployments and you know things breaking and troubleshooting things all the time right so yeah. that's that's a that's a big uh, big value but as a business you get much more velocity your innovation velocity is much higher you know your risk on your you know to your consumers is much lower because your your quality of the of, of you know how you ship becomes becomes better so our business case of like you know at the cost of like one to two devops engineers will get you the best devops uh, you know tooling in the world possible you know, it's it, it's not a hard business case for us to make, right? So that's that's what we we, we look at and it becomes pretty pretty obvious for, yeah. you know, as people try our product, uh, you know, the business case. Yeah, you don't have to really pass the IQ test to figure this one out. Okay, everyone's happier and you have more options to scale and make more money in new opportunities, not just existing business. I mean, yeah. the feature flag and these new features, you can build new value and take more mm -hmm. territory if you're a business or whatever your objective is. So mm -hmm. clear value. Can you yeah. give an example of some recent successes you've had or, or traction points that you think is worth notable um, that people can get their arms around? Yeah, uh, definitely. Like, you know, we, we, are, we are helping a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of customers, you know, doing uh, like completely changing their, uh, their, uh, uh, their process of software delivery. You know, one, one recent example uh, is uh, nationwide insurance. Uh, you know, nationwide insurance, you know, moving from their data center kind of approach to public cloud and to Kubernetes and to microservices, like a major cloud native re-architecture and in a very ambitious, aggressive project to do it, you know, in a, in a, in a short period of time. And Harness becomes a platform for them to kind of, you know, uh, to remove all the bottleneck around the process, the software delivery process, 
you know, they, they obviously they still have to do the, the developer side of things and they have to do the cloud infrastructure side of things, which they're doing, but the entire process of how you bring together, you know, harness becomes the accelerator around it. So there are a lot of these kind of stories that we, when we kind of create this fundamental transformation for our, for, 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 for our, for our customers, you know, uh, you know, moving to, to a public cloud, you know, moving to microservices, moving to Kubernetes, you know, re-architecting so that they become much faster, cloud native, higher, you know, uh, a true software company. And, you know, we, uh, I would say that's, that's something uh, we, 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 we take a, take a, take a lot of pride in. I think our, our always our biggest challenge is, uh, is to, is to, is to evangelize and, and convince the market that this is possible to do with the product, you know, because historically people have were told like, you know, the only way you can do these kind of software delivery processes and tooling is by engineering it on your own. So everyone was on the path of writing their own, you know, and, and it's very hard for every every company in the world to become very good in writing your own software delivery tooling and processes and systems, et cetera, right? So it's, uh, yeah. and that's, it's, you know, there is still that that uh, education and evangelism needs to be done that, you know, there is uh, there is no point you're trying to do it on your own. You can get a, a you know, platform that can do it all for you. And you can focus on the your, your core business of, you know, what you want to innovate on. And I think the DevOps movement has been pioneered and you had to hand roll everything and that's the way it was. But now as the mainstream market picks this up, you're standing on the shoulders of those pioneers. You are one of them. It's awesome to see this modern approach because it's really playing out in real time. Uh, again, you've done that before Joe T, so it's impressive. And you know, you know you've seen the movie in DevOps and the earlier versions, pre-DevOps. Mm -hmm. So so as cloud native comes and starts scaling, it's going to be for the rest of us. So great, great that you're providing the, the, the platform and the tools and the software. I got to ask you if you don't mind, um, because a lot of people are looking at ways for modern approaches to organizing their teams. How would you define the modern DevOps movement? If you look at DevOps 1.0, we got here, Okay, cloud, cloud native, cloud scale, modern applications, CICD pipelining. Now we're looking at a whole nother level of confluence of, uh, mm -hmm. of integration and speed. What, how would you define the yeah. modern DevOps movement? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very good question. I, I think that the core of modern DevOps, what I will call it DevOps 2.0, to me is developer self-service. That it, it was like the the, the 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 first generation of DevOps was that you create this kind of a DevOps team, and then the the developers will give all the you know delivery related stuff to the DevOps team, and the DevOps team starts to become a bottleneck everywhere now. Like you know the DevOps team job is to build the CI pipeline and the CD pipeline and the deployment scripts, and you know do like you know you want to do a Canary deployment, they have to figure it out how to do it. They have to do like you know your uh, you know, all sort of things that the, that needs to be done. You create a central DevOps team and you give it to them and they become like, you know, uh, become a big bottleneck. We look at the, the modern DevOps or the, the next generation of DevOps has to be done around focusing on the developer experience that and making it all self-service for the developers. So you, ha you have, let's say you are a dev team for a microservice and it's like, you know, five, seven engineers, you know, uh, modeling a microservice. You want like that they can go and say, this is for our microservice, you know, in a matter of minutes or hours, they can engineer the process without having to lean on a central DevOps team and to do all the work for them. And that's, you know, by by maybe in a, in a modeler or in some kind of a YAML interface or something that's very easy for them. Their experience is so easy that they can manage it themselves without the central DevOps team have to write it all or code it all and manage it all. But at the same time, the central DevOps team's job becomes around governance that can they define the guardrails that they can define the guardrails on like you know you have to have this level of security before something goes into production you have to have this level of quality before something goes into production you have to have like you know uh, this your cost could not be more than this right so you define so instead of the the devops team is doing all the work themselves on writing all the stuff uh, they define the guardrails and it becomes a very easy self-service experience for the developers to do things within those, those guardrails is what the modern DevOps should be. That's awesome. And also accelerate more business value and you're nailing it. Jyoti, thank you for coming on and great uh, to see you on theCUBE, CEO and co-founder of Harness, harness.io. Uh, you guys got free trials, free downloads. You got a great uh, buy as you go model. Uh, also, um, you're an entrepreneur at heart uh, Co-founder of Unusual Ventures, Big Labs, App Dynamics, now Harness. Congratulations! Thanks for coming on.
Hey, thank you, John. Okay, this is theCUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier here in Palo Alto, California with theCUBE. Thanks for watching.